Today we need to get into apparently people saying that Jungkook and Jenny were together at J-Hope's listening party. We need to get into apparently J-Hope's clothes being taken off and stolen. And then we need to get into Hybe speaking out about what is going on recently with J-Hope's promotion. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hate it or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. And make sure you join us fangirling on Patreon and let's go. So recently, people have been very upset because they think that the label has been trying to sabotage J-Hope. And I can see where this is coming from, but I think we need to give people the benefit of the doubt and cut them some slack. A company like Hive is always growing, is always hiring new staff, and it's kind of irresponsible or bad to blame the entirety of a company over a mistake for an artist. Now, a mistake that the label seems to be making doesn't seem to be impacting just BTS. It seems like they are making a mistake with every group that they're promoting. So every now and then you'll see something trending on Twitter of people getting angry that the label mispromoted the artist right. And so people who are just following BTS think that it's just BTS that is happening to, when in reality it is happening to all of the artists under Hive just because humans make mistakes. Now for a couple of the mistakes that were made, I want to talk about that. So apparently there was a listening party that went out and people were very excited about that. Now during the listening party, a link appeared that was actually incorrect. And this link was not supposed to appear because it wasn't actually promoting J-Hope's music. The song instead was promoting V's friends. Apparently this was happening for an hour and people were complaining and tweeting at the label to make sure that this was done. And this is a very long time for a mistake like this to happen apparently and absolutely and I see the frustration with this because during the first hour that a song is being premiered or shown it's kind of the first moment in which the community gets to listen to the song and feel excited about the song which is usually when most of the sales is going to happen from the community now it's not all doom and gloom just because a song isn't reaching its height within the first hour of getting a lot of sales within the first hour does it mean that it will never get sales Again, when it's promoted or pushed to radio or any of those sorts of things, sales can then re-peak either from the community or from new people. But of course, mistakes like this shouldn't really be happening and they're kind of costly to the company as well as the artist. And that is something to be made aware of too. And make note of it, that this isn't just happening to the artist and the artist is losing money. The label obviously doesn't want this to happen as well. So to blame the entirety of the label or blame the CEO or the founder and say it's their fault makes no sense to me because the mistake clearly probably is more so coming from the specific staff that would be handling this and give them a break. This could be something that they're new at doing. This is an ever-changing landscape and the social media teams and the people who work in that department have to constantly learn and adapt to new things and it's very stressful. Protesting and doing all this ensures that they get fired or punished and really it's not that big of a deal for someone to get a severe punishment over. There was another thing that happened which was the label tweeted out and spoke out about which what were the listening party dates and all that sort of stuff and those dates apparently were incorrect and they didn't make a note of that and then fix it and release the correct dates. People were making comments to say that the label really doesn't have that many artists to even be making that many mistakes. In fact, the amount of artists that they have probably equates to the size of other groups. And so people are also saying that it's not that many and they shouldn't be messing up this much. And the management of these artists really shouldn't be a big problem since there's not that many people in the label. This is music, this is art, this is not life or death, this is not someone's entire career on the line, this is not someone's life on the line. It's just art and music, it's not that serious. It's not worth getting someone fired over. There's been a lot of concern over if the boys are treated properly from the bottom. And the bottom line is, I think the boys would have a say in who they want to work with. If the boys are so upset about their team, they can ask for a change in their team without it being that big of a deal. And I'm sure the label would be happy to do that. This is not in the entirety of the label's fault. This is just a couple of employees that maybe are being a bit careless or already stressed with the amount of work that they have. Companies like to keep their employees extremely small. So even maybe for like four groups, they'll have like one person managing all of them. And yeah, you can imagine that's probably very stressful. However, aside from this, there's also been other issues of the boys' safety being a concern. Are they being protected? And a lot of people are bringing up old moments in which it would call for concern. One moment that was brought up was a moment in which a stalker tweeted out saying that they got a hold of J-Hope's toothbrush and used workout clothes, which obviously would mean that they 
either followed him to the gym, they stalked him in his dorm, or they went into his apartment and grabbed it. But either way, that is obviously disgusting and would imply that the stalker has a lot of capabilities to get very close to the specific member or any of the members, which of course means what else can they do to the members if they wanted to. Now this was tweeted out and we got to see the photos of a toothbrush and gym clothes. However, we have no idea if this is actually J-Hope's. All we know is that these are someone's toothbrush and someone's gym clothes, but it has no indication as to where it was taken or if this was specifically J-Hope's. Keep in mind that a lot of times what the community likes to do is they like to make up stories for the sake of it being shared and reposted everywhere. And since the community is already very sensitive to these sorts of things, it's very easy to provoke an emotion in people and people feel like they have to do something which is either share or contact someone or let their friend know. In reality, when we see these things, they're likely fake and there's really very little evidence to prove that it's real. And it's very easy to fake these sorts of things you just have to sort of build a set and then take a photo. So get a pair of pants or a toothbrush that have been seen with J-Hope in the past and then put it on the floor that could resemble something that their flooring in their apartment would have. And those who are concerned for J-Hope's safety now need to be aware that this is something that happened a long time ago and is not exactly relevant now. And it's not going to be something that he would worry about now. And if it was an issue back then, this person would likely be in jail by now. As I mentioned earlier, and as J-Hope has had his songs come out, we know that he has a listening party. Really quickly, I just want to mention what the purpose of a listening party is, because I think it's very important to know this and know that it's not just like a party where people get together or people dating or any of that sort of thing. The point of this is to invite your friends and acquaintances to the listening of the album or the song before it comes out to give advice on either what they think about the song or what they think might be a good idea for the rollout and marketing of the song to be. You're typically inviting people who are at the top of the industry that you know of and that are the best at what they do within your circle, and you're bringing them around to say, I need your advice, similar to having a dinner or a lunch with someone who you admire and asking them advice on something that you're doing and seeing where they can give support. Instead, you have so many industry professionals in one room that are willing to help you and hope that you succeed. Now, on top of that, there's also the point that a lot of people who attend the party might post about the party, might post about the song and get people hype about it. That is just kind of the added extra bonus of it. Now, people think that Blackpink or any of the members of Blackpink would be at the listening party. Now, the reason why they think this is probably because they didn't really listen to the listening party as it's one that's on station head. And second of all, I think that they think this because J-Hope has mentioned Blackpink before. Not too long ago when he was doing his album, he had a bit of a scandal with himself and the girls. He had a promo photo with their name on the piece of paper and people were wondering that if that meant that there was a collaboration or what that situation was. Now when the song actually came out, people kind of forgot about this and didn't really talk about it, but there ended up actually not even being a, a song with any of the girls in them. So was this either there because there was a lot of backlash and then he decided to remove the song or was it because the photo was just a publicity stunt and media plan? Of course, at listening parties and those sorts of things, the other members of BTS are always invited and so they think that the girls and the rest of BTS were likely invited to this listening party and they were chatting and together. That is probably true. That could happen. Did it happen? We have no idea. I doubt it, but that has happened before where Jenny and Jungkook were at a Calvin Klein party together. But as I mentioned earlier, having a listening party does not imply dating or a relationship. The point of it, going to a listening party, isn't to hook up with people or to meet people. It's just to be there to support the person that's there and to talk about the album and catch up with other people, if you're doing that at all, right? Most of the time, these events are networking situations and it's there to help the artists get to know each other artists and also artists to get to know what worked for that artist so that that artist can then take inspiration and use it for themselves. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.